tonight on KGW News. More break-ins leave yet another Rose City business questioning its future. Is your like? Is this the right place? Why the owner says it seems the suspects knew exactly what they were doing. Um, this audit is unmistakably bad. A scathing review for the agency charged with fixing Portland's homeless crisis. But the programs out here are rough. The efforts to help auditors say that are causing even more confusion. But first, some students love him. He got you. He got you. But the district says he's done. Why Portland School Board voted to terminate a controversial teacher. Right? It's actually an honor to be fired. An honor to be fired. Thanks for joining us. I'm David Molko. That teacher, Brian Chu, says he was targeted for standing up for students and minorities. But school board members say his firing has nothing to do with that. Catherine Cook was at tonight's meeting. Catherine, walk us through what happened here. Well, David, tonight's hearing was unusual from the start. School disciplinary matters are typically confidential unless the employee asks them to be considered publicly. Brian Chu did that. Board members suggested it wasn't Chu's beliefs or convictions they disagreed with. It was how he did or didn't do his job. Middle school teacher Brian Chu bowed to supporters Tuesday night as he walked into his termination hearing at Portland Public Schools headquarters. About an hour later, PBS school board members voted to fire him for insubordination and neglect of duty. Chu taught social studies at Harriet Tubman Middle School in North Portland. He'd been on paid leave since April 2022. This is what he told us about that before the meeting. Well, it's been nice, you know. Um, it's funny, uh, you don't realize how toxic PPS is until you're actually out of it. I feel, I feel bad for all the teachers that are still in it. At Mr. Chu's request, the hearing was also a public hearing. During the hearing, which Chu requested be made public, board members cited their biggest concerns, gleaned from more than a thousand pages of documents. The, the issues with coworkers, uh, complaints of bullying, creating unsafe workplace. Grades were not based on demonstrated student work, um, in which there weren't lesson plans, a whole host of other things that weren't happening in the classroom, which have an impact on students. Well, I know you better. Chu has a history of standing up against Portland Public Schools for a number of reasons. That includes expletive lace disruptions during school board meetings. Some students say he helped them stand up against a planned I-5 expansion that would require their school to be moved. Reasons some students and teachers spoke in support of Chu. Mr. Chu's classroom was always the perfect temperature, always had food, always had good vibes, and produced productive, outspoken, compassionate students. I believe Brian Chu symbolizes the underdog in this district, always raising his voice to stand up for what's right, despite the fear of being retaliated against. All in favor, please indicate by saying yes. 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 In the end, the board voted five to one, with one abstaining to fire oh, like, Chu. Uh, white supremacist system? I mean, what do you expect? Right? It's actually an honor to be fired. Well, some pretty strong words there. All right, Catherine, what happens next? Is this a done deal? Well, David Chu says he plans to seek arbitration and tells us it's not over and that this is just the beginning. Portland Public Schools confirmed tonight that arbitration is indeed an option, so we'll see what happens next. Yeah, we certainly will. Thank you, Catherine. Developing tonight a search for thieves who hit a Portland bike parts manufacturer. We've got surveillance video of the suspects. We're going to show you walking out of Precision Components in Northwest. The company's been hit twice in the past month. In all, the suspects stole three bikes, prototypes, and custom maids worth a total of $45,000. One was part of a display tucked away, so the GM said the thieves must have known what they were looking for. If you have to go to security levels that you feel like you're a bank, or something like that, it changes your culture inside. You know, I mean, if you gotta put more cameras up, then you're in here working every day with cameras. That changes your dynamic in your building. Um, just to try to make sure that some knucklehead from outside doesn't show up in the middle of the night trying to take your stuff. Well, the GM adds he does not want to move the business out of the city, but the events of the past month are prompting him to reconsider. We'll give you another look here. Here are the three bikes that were stolen, an Envy, a Moots, and a Cielo. If you come across one or recognize the suspects in that video, you're asked to call Portland Police.
To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now, in Tigard, police are still looking for the driver they say hit a woman and sent her to the hospital. This was just before 9 last night on Southwest Hall Boulevard. Police say a woman and her boyfriend stopped in the center lane and got out to retrieve an item. That is when the woman was hit by a passing car. Her injuries are life-threatening. So far, there is no description of the hit-and-run vehicle. We have an update out of Happy Valley where investigators say they have found no evidence of asbestos after a former fiberglass plant burned down. That fire sparked early Saturday morning in a building on Audi Road already slated for demolition. An apartment complex was evacuated due to asbestos concerns. Residents there were allowed back on Sunday. Investigators say they believe this fire was set intentionally. And after more than a decade in office, Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum says she will not run for a fourth term. She became Oregon's first female AG back in 2012. In her statement, Rosenblum said the office belongs to the people of Oregon and that every state agency can benefit from new leadership and energy. Tonight, a scathing audit has revealed what some are calling staggering missteps in the agency charged with finding solutions to Portland's homeless crisis. From communication problems to late payments, Blair Best breaks down what auditors found and why some county leaders say they are not surprised. First up on the Multnomah County Commissioner's agenda Tuesday, an audit of the Joint Office of Homeless Services. That's the group jointly run by the county and city of Portland, formed in 2016 and tasked with coordinating funding and a response to homelessness. Tuesday morning, county commissioners heard from the county auditor about the program. To make sure that we are being accountable to taxpayers, we are being um, really effective with the work that happens here at the county. The audit revealed communication problems and a pattern of late payments to providers. And it's not for a lack of money. This fiscal year, more than $300 million is budgeted to move through the joint office. Auditors recommend they improve their finance department. Delays in payments create a hardship for service providers and ultimately put the populations they serve at risk. The county's audit team interviewed 48 homeless service providers or nonprofits that the joint office works with. And in our survey, uh, about two out of three providers surveyed uh, believe that the joint office did not do a good job of coordinating service providers. Next slide, please. They also found no clear path for people to move from the streets into housing. Despite the name joint office, it's a very disjointed network. People are often required to interact with multiple systems. They can be eligible for services in more than one system, and each system has its own application process and assessment. It's a struggle that you don't understand until you're in it. Iridessa has tried getting into housing five times in the past three years. And then they reached me out to somebody else, I'm like, well, now I have two ongoing programs with two different people, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Joint Office Director Dan Field, who has only led the office for four months, admits they could do better. The findings um, can be hard to hear. Hard for you all as, as leaders of the county. Uh, hard for taxpayers who are wondering uh, how the dollars are spent effectively. But he argues the audit doesn't cover everything they do. I also want to acknowledge a lot of good work happened last year. As one very specific example, we prevented um, evictions in 5,300 households. An achievement Commissioner Sharon Myron pushed back on. This audit is unmistakably bad. We get evidence of how awful things really are and then the county pivots to say, but look over here and points to a, a little number. What's at the heart of the problem is the lack of a plan. A plan to help people like Iridessa. Like I want to get clean and stuff, but the programs out here are rough. I hope we recognize the iceberg, this, the tip of the iceberg this audit has revealed um, and explore the full iceberg before it sinks all our efforts to eradicate homelessness in this county. Blair Best, KGW News. What a closing thought there. New at 11, two weeks after Portland City Council passed a ban on public drug use, the Emerald City has now done the same thing. Seattle Council Chambers erupting in dissent this afternoon after that vote. Man, you. 
All right, well, those against the change may have been the loudest. People on all sides testified, some saying the needs of the public need to be protected against the effects of public drug use. Others said it is no way to treat people who need help for addiction. I'm a little sick and tired of going to a job site where I've got somebody smoking fentanyl or shooting up with no respect for my welfare or the customer's welfare or the business welfare. And all of you seem a little bit too excited to hand more authority to a trigger happy city attorney who plans on prosecuting more and prosecuting disproportionately. This is unacceptable. Washington's governor signed a law earlier this year that made drug possession and public use gross misdemeanors. While the new ordinance says diversion should be the preferred response, the law now allows city attorneys to prosecute those crimes. You're watching KTW News and straight ahead at 11, the crime that falls into the category of what were they thinking? The evidence some suspected thieves apparently left behind after they took a stolen car for a joyride. Plus, first ODA told us to get used to it. Now it seems they're taking action. So when it comes to graffiti on our highways, what's changed? I'm Matt Safino. We're going to change seasons later on this week. Yes, the days of summer, of course, are numbered as fall begins late on Friday. And we'll have some great summer weather before that happens. But already a little bit of rain showing up. Nothing like, however, what's on the way. We've got a couple of good soakers as we head into the new season.